I don't ever want to have to tell another grown woman that her that she smells so bad that that's the reason why the 16 people surrounding her are sitting there for an hour and 15 minutes doing this? I don't know. I'd say I'm reasonable. Okay, that's completely unreasonable. I'm, I'm, I'm unreasonable. I'm, I'm unreasonable. You, you have no idea just how reasonable I have been. Reasonable synonyms are sensible, rational, practical, fair, appropriate. Fit, fitting, suitable, logical. All things I would definitely say describe me. Do they describe you? Welcome to I'm Reasonable with Zaynab Johnson. Mm, I'm reasonable. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Welcome to the fourth episode of I'm Reasonable. That sounds like consistency. Welcome to the fourth for, <laughs> welcome to the fourth episode of I'm Reasonable with Zainab Johnson. That is me. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode. Um, and thank you, everybody. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. I'm 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 seeing the numbers grow, grow, grow. So thank you. Okay, so before we get into <laughs> what's within reason. And what's not within reason, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Mubarak, Ramadan Kareem. Uh, <clears throat> if you don't know, it's Ramadan. Ramadan is the ninth month of the Islamic calendar. Um, the Islamic calendar goes by the moon, um, not the sun. And it's the ninth month. It's the holy month uh, where Muslims, we... Um, uh, we work on um, deepening our spiritual and familial connections. We fast from sun up to sundown from everything. <laughs> Food, liquids, uh, sex, intimacy, bad thoughts, bad words. Um, we should be much more charitable during the month of Ramadan. Um, and what I like about Ramadan, first of all, let me just say this. Every time I explain what Ramadan is and when every other Muslim explains what Ramadan is, the number one response is, wait, you can't even drink water? Even my Pilates instructor, she was like, okay, so Ramadan is starting. I was like, yes, there is a fly in here and I'm so pissed. It's like it must want to die, right? Because why would you, why would you, the fly is unreasonable. Anywho, um, <clears throat> My Pilates instructor was like, um, yeah, well, not eating from sun up to sundown is like cool, right? You do it for 30 days. And I'm like, yeah. And then I, and she was like, but as long as you can drink water, right? And I was like, no, it's no water. What 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 are people not getting about this? It's not it's 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 nothing inside the body. I'm even careful when I'm brushing my teeth. I don't swallow anyway. Pause. <laughs> now I sound like a podcast. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, when I brush my teeth, I, of course, I'm not a little kid. I don't swallow the toothpaste. But I'm even particular when I'm brushing my teeth when the sun is up to make sure that I'm not, like, taking in any, you know, liquids. Um, anywho, no water. Um, but you know what? This is what I wanted to say about Ramadan. This year is, a, is, is slightly different for me. Um, I was listening to a bunch of news podcasts, um, you know, this week and, um, they were interviewing a lot of Muslims and the common question was like, what are you praying for, um, this Ramadan? And a lot of people said personal things. Um, you know, some people mentioned like their daughter or relative might be like giving birth soon or um, they may have moved into a new home or had made some really big like positive life change, you know. But every single person included in their prayers, all of the people um, in Gaza, all of the um, Palestinian people, the people who are... Um, under unimaginable conditions. Um, and it gave me some perspective. It gave, I mean, I, I, I feel like I have perspective, but it also made me feel like on those days where 
I'm like watching the sun and the sun is taking forever to set and I'm feeling, you know, parched and my stomach is growling and I'm feeling fatigued and I'm feeling dizzy, you know, um, I am going to just stop and pray for the people um, in Gaza because they're also celebrating Ramadan. They're, they're, they're looking forward to Ramadan, um, knowing that they may not even be able to, that they not may not even be, they won't be able to feast when the sun goes down, that they may not even be able to really have a sufficient meal, nothing close to a sufficient meal. Um, and so I'm going to keep that in mind this entire month. So all my Muslims out there fasting for Ramadan, uh, celebrating Ramadan, um, Ramadan Mubarak. Um, may Allah hear your prayers and bless your families, your loved ones, um, and and protect all of those suffering. Okay, so, um, oh, I was in Tacoma this weekend. I was in Tacoma this past weekend, Tacoma, Washington, at Nate Jackson's Super Funny Comedy Club. Thank you so much, everybody that came out to Tacoma to see me. Um, thank you so much. I had such, so much fun on stage in Tacoma. Um, I also... I'll post a story or something about it. I found a 100% gluten-free bakery, um, and I tried some new dishes, and I'll put that on my Instagram story, so just check out my Instagram stories. Anywho, so thank you, Tacoma, for, you know, having fun with me this past weekend. Next up is Las Vegas. Okay, let me turn off my notifications. Um, let's put that on Do Not Disturb. Next up, I'm in Las Vegas, um, March 22nd and March 23rd. I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada, headlining shows at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. So go to my website, go to the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club website, um, go to my IG and you can get the link in my bio. Get those tickets if you're in Las Vegas or surrounding areas. Get those tickets, okay? Come, um, come have fun with me because, you guys, I'll be in Vegas on my birthday celebrating Ramadan and so I'm going to go crazy once I once I break my fast and get on stage, okay? Um let's see. Oh, before we get into anything else, make sure you guys subscribe, okay? Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe to my channel so that you can be alerted when I post a new episode, which is every Wednesday. And also you'll see the stand-up clips that I'm posting. And of course, I'm going to start posting like vloggy stuff and adding stuff. I'm definitely going to be vlogging a lot when I get to Australia. I'll be at the, Aust I'll be at the Melbourne Comedy Festival March 27th through April 7th or 8th. And so you can go to my website or the Melbourne International Comedy Festival site to get tickets for that. So I'm definitely going to be adding like vloggy stuff. So yeah, subscribe to this channel. Subscribe right now. Go ahead. Go ahead. Subscribe. All right, now that we got that out the way, what's up with Z? What's up with Z? First of all, what's up with me? New hair, who this? New hair, who is this? <laughs> Z went long. Z went long. I went long, y'all. But let me just tell you what, it's giving, it's giving coming out of my scalp, right? It's giving... <laughs> It's giving good genes running. I don't know why I said that. It's giving. It's giving soror. It's giving who you pledge, sis. It's giving meet me at the quad third period. I don't know college talk. Um, I haven't been there for a while and I did not go to an HBCU. <laughs> Although I always wanted to. Anyway. Um, okay. So this is what's up with me. I actually forgot to tell y'all this last week. My very close friends and I, my very close friend Sabrina Ravel, her and I, we decide to go to see The Wiz at the Pantages Theater in Los Angeles, California. I love The Wiz. I love the original Wiz. This is sort of like a reimagined Wiz. It doesn't step too far away from the original Wiz, but the updates were actually really nice. So uh, I think it's touring different cities before it heads to, to, to um, Broadway. So we decided to check it out in Los Angeles. 
Sabrina and I, we grab our seats. The show is about to start. You know, most people are in their seats. At some point, right before the show starts, um, the ushers let in some people who were supposed to sit in our row. When the girl who's sitting to the right of me, who's supposed to sit to the right of me, when she sat down, it was a gust of the most toxic air I have ever inhaled. She sat down and the stench, the st and I say this respectfully, the stench was, it was, it was difficult to deal with. It was one of them stenches where I, I honestly got concerned with like the lines in my face, like wrinkles, because my face immediately started to like, like, reform my face immediately started to change because my body my senses couldn't really take what was being forced upon me like this was this woman smelled so bad not only did her body smell bad but and this is beyond like bo this isn't just like you smelling musty this ain't even just like you know like oh are you is your female you know what i'm saying have you not washed properly this is way beyond that this is this is, this is bad. This is like pH unbalanced, okay? This is pungent. This is, this is disrespectful. This is unbearable. I'm telling you guys, it was, it was when you breathe in, you can taste it. It was unreasonable. You see what's happening to me as I think about it? It, it was like I've never experienced before, but not just her body, unfortunately, not just her body, but are you still taping? Not just her body, but her breath. She had one of those breaths that smells so bad she ain't even have to talk. You know, some people you don't really smell their breath until they in your face. They talking and you like, woo, okay, this is a lot. I'm gonna have to say bye early. You know, um, she. Or or some or or maybe people have like um that sort of like breath where it's like, oh, have they been fasting? We all know the Ramadan breath, right? We all know the Ramadan breath. I remember one year I was fasting during Ram Ramadan and I was so happy to see one of my younger sisters and I went up to her and I hugged her and I was talking to her real close in her face and she said, Oh my god, Zainab, <laughs> you you either gotta eat right now or you have to go upstairs and be by yourself until you can eat. <laughs> And let me tell you what I did, because I was not going to break my fast as much as she hurt my feelings. I removed myself from her and I went and kept myself secluded and didn't say nothing. I just made, I just prayed. I made my salat. And then when I was able to eat something, I went back down and I became social again. This was not that. This wasn't gingivitis. This wasn't like you got a bad tooth in the back. This was she... All she had to do was simply breathe. And it came from her, like if we drew a cartoon, we could see the green, the green toxins coming from her, the green and brown toxins coming from her body, out her nose, out her mouth, her body. And then, you know, when you got, when you got body odors, you can't wear fabric that traps that. You can't wear polyester. You can't wear spandex. You can't wear anything that's not breathable. Your best friend is cotton and silk if you got the money. You need a breathable fiber. Fiber. Anywho, it was so bad. It was so bad that Sabrina and I, we sitting there. We don't want to. We, we don't want to be disrespectful to this woman. We don't want to be mindful that she might have a condition. Because I don't think anybody is just going knowingly. She ain't even look like somebody who would make that bad of a choice for herself. She didn't look that way, right? So we doing this because it's a necessity. We don't want to do it, but it's like, it's like if I continue to breathe this in, I'm going to pass out. I'm going to pass out. So we don't know what to do. We watched the whole show. Now, you know, uh, plays typically have intermission. So we watched about the first, I don't know, hour and 15 minutes of it. And then soon as, as soon as the lights came up for the intermission, she didn't move. And so 
I shifted myself in the seat. I turned to her. I said to my friend, I said to Sabrina first, I said, I think I'm going to say something. And I didn't say it like, oh, I'm a big bad, like, ooh, watch me call her out. Because I, I really didn't want, you don't never have to want to say something like that to somebody. But I, I just knew that we were suffering. We, I was ready to leave the play because there was no way that I could deal with that. And I say that humbly. That there, there, I would have, I, might, I may have thrown up if I stayed longer. That's how bad it was. So I say to my friend Sabrina, I'm like, yo, I, I, you know, I, I think I'm going to have to say something. And, I, and I, the reason why I tell her is because I don't know how she is going to respond to me. I don't know how this woman is going to respond to me. But let me tell you, I'm about to say something that is not good news to somebody. And just in case it go left, let me let you know, just so you ain't surprised if the lady hauled off and slapped me. You know, which would have been very unreasonable, but I'm just saying. So I turned to the girl and I'm saying lady, but girl, like she, we're about the same age. She, we look like we are in the same age range. Now I do look younger, younger than I am. Um, <laughs> I do look younger than I am. Um, but so, but she could have been way younger than me. I don't know. But we looked like we were in the same age range. So I turned to her, you guys, so, so, um, like, politely. And I said, I, I turned to her and her friends. I said, excuse me, are you all together? The friend, the, the girl turned her back, turned, gave me the shoulder immediately. So her friend looks. And I realized when I look at her two friends, they masked up. They, they're masked up. So I'm like, oh, I don't know if they worried about COVID or if they just used to the 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 the, the pungency coming off the body of their friend, but they were fully masked. So I said to the friend, because the, the, the girl, the main girl, she turned her shoulder to me. I said, um, the, you know, I'm so sorry to say this. I'm I'm so sorry to say this to you. I'm so sorry to bring this up and I say this respectfully. I do not want to hurt your feelings or offend you in any way. The odor coming from your person is unbearable. It is it is treacherous. I'm not sure if there is a solution, but if there is any way you could excuse yourself during the intermission, go to the bathroom and, and maybe try to improve it. It, it, it would be so appreciated. The girl cut me off. <laughs> the, the friend with the mask on, she's, she, she's sympathetic because she know. She was like, she looked at the friend like, what you want to do? Because she know. She was probably happy that I said something. She was like, the one that stink though, the one that she, I even, she, when she turned her shoulder and said, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. Matter of factly, you guys, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Sabrina laughed. Sabrina looks, shakes her head and laughs. Cause this is, you can't believe it. And she don't laugh. Like, like, it's like, you cannot even believe. Cause she, she, my friend who knows me so well, watched me humble myself. She watched me show such great care with this really unfortunate thing that I have to say, right? So she watched me, she watched my whole body language change, you know, in service of us, but also this woman, right? And so she turned, you know, so I say, I'm not sure. When she turned and said, no, I'm good, I'm fine, I'm fine. And I'm not going to let you ruin my night. <laughs> I said, I, 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 I understand that this might be a trigger. Y'all, you know, when you break out therapy words, I said, I understand that me calling it out might be a trigger. I understand that, 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 that it may not be something that you can control. It may be something that someone has uh, used against you. In the I'm saying all of this, you guys. I said, I understand if it's a condition. I said, but it's, it, it is, 
it's unbearable. She went on, she she got her back fully turned to me. She talking to her friend, no, and I'm not, I ain't gonna let her ruin my night. And the friend is just like, you know, the friend is just going along with her, like, okay, okay. And she kind of looked at me like, gave me like the sorry eyes, but then just like kind of shook her head yes to everything the friend was saying. And so then I sat there for a little while to like really think about what I would do. Like, as much as she giving me like really bad attitude and I'm coming to her severely humble because somebody else could have been wildly disrespectful, as disrespectful as her smell. But it's like, what's that for? I'm not looking at her like she doing it on purpose. I'm looking at her like it's unfortunate, you know? And if you knew that you smelled this, nope, I, I, that's something I would have to go to the doctor for immediately if I was walking around. I would be completely uncomfortable. So me considering that if she knows that this is an issue that she has, the discomfort and embarrassment, I'm considering that. That's the reason why I approached it, in my opinion, so delicately. So when she hit me with the, I don't get, you know, I don't care. I don't give a fuck. What you talking about? I had to just sit there for a couple of seconds and, and, and kind of process, you know, like what's my next move? <laughs> so I turned to Sabrina and I said, um, I may have to leave. Uh, give me a second. I'll be right back. And I got up, I left the theater. I saw the first usher. I found the first usher that I, you know, I talked to the first usher that I saw. I said, hey, is there like a help desk or something? She pointed me to like guest services. There was a woman working at guest services and she was like, can I help you? And I was like, yeah, I, I hate to say this. You know, I hate to bring this to um, your attention or to have a complaint like this. And then I explained to her everything that I just told you guys. And she was like, oh, OK, one second, let me get the supervisor. So she got the supervisor. No, I'm so sorry. First thing I said was because I'm always solution oriented. Right. So first thing I said to the guest services person, I said, excuse me, is the show fully sold out? Because in my mind, I ain't even going to tell you the problem. I'm going to just buy me and my friend new tickets. I don't care that we just paid two hundred fifty dollars a piece. For these tickets, I don't care if you have more tickets, wherever they at, I'm going to buy me and my friend new seats because we, 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 it's either that or we leave the show. So I said, is the show completely sold out? And she said, yes, but she kind of hesitated. Like it wasn't a strong yes. So I looked at her, I stopped and I said, I'm asking for a very specific reason. Is the show fully sold out? Like there is the, every single seat is taken in the theater. And she said, well, what's going on? And then that's when I explained to her what had happened and what was going on. And she could, she could see the distress in my face. She, I, I, was, I was even still apologizing to the girl. I'm not even sitting next to the girl no more. I'm in front of guest services and I'm apologizing for having to even had said something, have said something to her. And so then the woman was like, okay, let me get my supervisor. Supervisor comes over and she starts to relay my story. And I'm listening to her related story. And she said, yeah, this woman is, you know, said that the woman sitting next to her has BO. I had to stop her. Oh, no, 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 no. I've, I've been around people with BO before. If you're going to relay this story, I need you to relay the story with the urgency and the impact. The severity. I'm out here telling you I'm about to spend an extra 500 plus dollars to sit somewhere else for the second half of a show. So then I said, I'm so sorry. I have to stop you. I, <laughs> I physically, I ain't touched her, but I had to just in the, you know what I'm saying? In the air. I said, could you please step aside? I'll, I'll tell her. And then I proceeded to tell the supervisor and she said, okay, give me one second. She stepped away from me. She got on a walkie talkie or something like that. She yelled at a few people. And then she said, I'm giving away the tickets. I'm giving away the two tickets. I'm giving them away. And then she came back to me and was like, these are the last two seats in the house. Um, she wrote them down. She said, go right over there, give them to this specific person. And these are your seats. She looked at the seats I had and was like, and they're much better than the seats you have. I said, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I go right back into the theater. I'd say, Sabrina, let's go. And we go sit and watch the show. 
Um, and Sabrina was like, Zaina, thank you so much for doing Because it's like, I think we was both trying to decide, like, okay, well, what's the solution? If the person causing the problem is completely unwilling, then, then, then what's the solution? Do we make the choice to just leave? You know, and we were there the last night of the showing, I believe. Anywho, were, was I unreasonable for telling the girl that she, that she smell bad? Was I unreasonable or like, I don't know. I, I feel like what I did was the most reasonable thing anybody could do. And, and somebody I think might say, well, you could have just sat there and took it. But that's almost like me allowing abuse. I'm all about accommodating people in the world that aren't the same as me. I'm all about a disabled ramp. I'm all about a, a here, you know, a, 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 I even was talking to somebody at one of my shows who was having a hard time hearing. And I said, I'm so sorry. I'll look into seeing if there's a, if there are, you know, um, devices, you know, for the hearing impaired. Like I care about stuff like that. I don't ever want to have to tell another grown woman that her, that she smells so bad that that's the reason why the 16 people surrounding her are sitting there for an hour and 15 minutes doing this. And could she please see herself to the bathroom to try to remedy it? I don't want to have to be that person, but I had to be that person. So was I, was I unreasonable? Or was what I did very reasonable? Let me know, you guys. Let me know in the What's Up With Z. Hashtag it with What's Up With Z. Or you could put the whole story and then let me know. Okay, so last week I did a list of reasonables, right? I did a list of reasonable people and things. And so this week we are going to go back to the unreasonables. And <laughs> first on my unreasonable list, yes, men. Or yes, women. People who are around people and all they do is agree with them. The friend. The friend knowing good and well her friend smelled like medicinal hot trash. But still was like, it's okay, girl. It's okay. No. No, it's not okay. It's not okay. But people who, I think it's both. I think it's like, the person who surrounds themselves with yes people and the yes people. Like that's, that's why we got, that's why we got people. That's why we got celebrities running around here. Addicts and, you know, doing wild things because people are just around them, enabling them, you know, saying yes, saying yes, saying yes, knowing that the yes is not um, helpful to them it's not helpful to their work. It's not helpful to their environment. The only person it's really helpful to is the person saying yes because you get to stay around. You get to stay around. So, yes, people are unreasonable. Enabling alcoholics. Enabling anybody that has an addiction is completely unreasonable, and I feel like I should not even have to explain that. Like, when I when I watch people who I know have I'm I'm that I'm the type of person if you if I feel like you're an addict you you can't get nothing from me you can't get nothing from me you especially can't I'm not gonna invite you to no parties with alcohol I mean I don't drink anyway but I'm not an addict I just don't I don't I don't drink right but if I know that you're an addict I'm not going to put you around that at all one of my very close friends is. Um, a recovering, you know, alcoholic. And we were on a road trip and I was like, you know what? I'm going to stop in and get some kombucha. Now I know that kombucha has like, can have some slight traces of alcohol, right? Because it's fermented. And so I said, oh, can I, uh, you can't have kombucha, right? And she said, no, absolutely not. And I said, dang, so I won't get a kombucha. She was like, no, 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 you can get a kombucha. That's, that's so, totally, but I'm that aware. I'm that aware. Because I don't want to help you sl die a slow death. But I watch people. It's like I'm just thinking about the the um, Wendy Williams documentary. Still, it's like so you the 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 publicist. It's like you helping that woman die a slow death. That's crazy. That's that's wild. It, uh, unreasonable is 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 the polite thing to say about you. The state of Alabama.
Yes, I said it. The whole state of Alabama is unreasonable. Fight me. I don't care. If you don't know, um, a couple of weeks ago, a family, a couple, found out that their embryos were destroyed. Destroyed stupidly, I will admit. That is so unfortunate. Uh, someone, some idiot broke into um, the lab where the eggs were being frozen. And I care about that stuff because I have eggs frozen in a lab right now. Uh, fro frozen in a freezer right now. Um, broke into, um, you know, a freezer. Reached and grabbed one of the vials. And it's so cold because it ain't a regular freezer. It's so cold, it froze their hand, it, they dropped it, destroyed, destroyed the couple's embryos. That is terrible. Terrible, terrible, terrible. Couples decide they want this person tried for murder. So uh, they take it to court, and on a, on a, you know, on a local level, they're like, you know, no, but then Alabama, they're like, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's bad. And you gotta, we gotta find a different charge for this person, but it's not murder. And so they go to the Alabama Supreme court and the Alabama Supreme court decide that embryos are considered life. That an embryo is considered a real baby, uh, a living person and then it shut down. So that one thing shut down. There were so many women in the state of Alabama waiting on and about to have in vitro, about to do all of these fertility things. And it was all shut down in a matter of a day. Unreasonable, Alabama. Unreasonable. At this point, it's also like. Sometimes you got to sacrifice one to save the many, right? And don't get me wrong, I have, I have a very deep level of empathy for that couple and their loss. But this is unreasonable. And for the Supreme Court of Alabama to be like, yep, let's, let's, I know your life is effed up, but let's F up a bunch of other women's lives in service of your life, in service of your grief. Unreasonable. Ugh. Unreasonable. Okay, so... <laughs> What's on the program today? I am surprised. It is 5.50. It is 5.41 p.m. as I tape this. Um, and I am, I have so much energy. And I'm surprised that I have so much energy because it's Ramadan. Um, but okay, let's get into the main story on the program today. The main story on the program today is <laughs> Donald Trump, former President Donald Trump, uh, GOP nominee Don Donald Trump, being indicted on multiple charges, Donald Trump, uh, host of a very popular reality show, Donald Trump. Um, really bad toupee, Donald Trump. I typically don't talk about Donald Trump at all, although I find humor, like I really enjoy when other people talk about him. I enjoy when people do impressions of him. Uh, my favorite person doing impressions of him right now is Godfrey. They're so, so, so funny. Um, but I'm talking about him today because I saw this video earlier um, and it was captioned, um, Donald Trump blew off his grandson. And I'm like, what? So, you know, I just had to click on it because I'm like, wait, what are they talking about? Right. So apparently there's footage right now of Donald Trump. He was at a UFC um, match and the clip is going viral right now. Donald Trump is 77 years old, by the way, which is crazy to me that it's like him and Biden are basically the same age. And when you watch the video, you like, I mean, this really could be some age behavior you know anyway um so he was walking through the audience right at this UFC match um in Florida this past Saturday and he's you know saying hi to everybody people trying to shake his hand people happy to see him 
And then he pat, he sees his daughter, Ivanka Trump, and her husband, Jared Kushner. And he goes right to his daughter as he normally does. He gives her, like, you know, one of them real polite hugs, kisses her on the cheek. He then shakes Jared Kushner's hand. And his grandson, their, Ivanka and Jared's son, they're standing behind them, you know, just standing behind them. And so after Trump shakes Jared's hand, he then proceeds to, to keep walking. Here, watch the video. The, the grandson don't even speak up like I mean I can't really hear what they saying because the music is in the background but the grandson don't even speak up so <laughs> so then uh, you know then things so once once the video you know was put online um you know it started to go viral people had opinions and then I guess Ivanka came out and said that she was mad at her dad because he ignored her son basically but first of all it, it didn't really seem like they did anything to really. The way the sun was standing, the positioning of the where the sun was standing was crazy to me. Because most parents, when they're waiting for somebody, like think about when you see parents at a parade, right? And they're waiting for somebody to pass. Usually the parents stand in the back and the kid is in the front. And they're holding the kid's shoulders or something like that, depending on how big or small the kid is. But usually the kid is in the front because everybody know you ain't going to be able to see the short person behind you. So I don't even think that he saw his grandson. And listen, it would... It would service anybody that don't like Trump to be like, he's so terrible. Look at him. He's so stupid. He's so he don't even like his own grandson. That's low hanging fruit. That is low hanging fruit. It's much more reasonable to just sit, look at the video and be like, he didn't see him. He was on cruise control, you know, saying hi to all his fans. Of course, he going to embrace his family a little bit more. But he didn't see the kid don't even come up today. The kid come up to their hips. And then the kid standing there. He don't, it don't even seem like the kid, the kid scream or like the kid is happy. Like grandpa, grandpa. <laughs> I can't even imagine nobody saying that to Trump. Like grand, he don't even really sit, look like he, like the grandfather to be in the living room. Like come here, sit on my knee. He don't even really seem like the type, you know, he don't seem like, show me what do Show me what planes you, you, you playing with. He don't even seem like that type. <laughs> So the fact that he walked by, it's like that's still your grandson. That's still his grandfather. It's clear. The fact that it was caught on camera and like now people are providing their own narrative. But don't fall for it. The, the, the narrative is an unreasonable narrative. We could just look at it and simply say, oh, he probably just missed it. And he's being ushered along. You see how you see how quick he ain't even he ain't even ask his daughter. How you doing? He ain't even really have a conversation with them. But then, if that was my father, I would have just grabbed my father back. I'd have been like, oh, Abu, you forgot. My son, he's right here. But also, I'm going to be honest with y'all, I liked it. The little boy looked like he was dressed in prep school attire. The little boy had a lot of pomade in his hair, which already lets me know he ain't really living the full f freedom of a kid, you know? And so he might have he needed to be humbled just a little bit. He might have needed to be humble. Like, oh, I'm a, I'm, I don't know. That's, I, I may be putting too much on the kid. It is, I might be being unreasonable, right? I don't know how old the little kid, little kid is. But I did think that it was unreasonable to like get, let's watch it again. Let's watch it again. Maybe, let me know what you guys think. We're not asking if Donald Trump is a reasonable person. We already know that I believe that he's wildly unreasonable. Okay. Um, so I am not asking you guys if Trump is unreasonable. I'm asking you, given the video that you saw, should his daughter, Ivanka Trump, be pissed? And should the Internet, should people on the Internet be fueling the fire? Like, look, he 
ignored his own grandson. He blew right past his own grandson. it again Jared Kushner ain't even concerned so if y'all gonna talk about the grandfather talk about the father too the father ain't paying him no mind I don't know what Ivanka is saying to him I don't know if he said oh man I miss grandpa I miss granddad why didn't he I don't know what that little boy is saying but it seems like Ivanka is like saying like okay well you know let's just get in this you know let's go get some popcorn that's what it looked like she's saying I don't know I can't read lips but it looks like she's saying, oh, look, isn't that your favorite UFC, UFC fighter? Like, I don't know what she's saying. But it seemed like she tried to move on to the next thing. But, I mean, his father is not comforting him. It could not have been that bad. <laughs> All right. Let's move on to our very to to our last but certainly not least segment of Ask Z. Before we go into Ask Z, I want you guys to hit that subscribe button. If you haven't, hit the thumbs up, like it, share it, like let somebody know. Be like, yo, check this out, um, and subscribe. I really appreciate it. It helps. Thank you so much. Okay, let's get into. I think I'm gonna take the time to do this long one. Remember when I was like. This one is too long. It got to be a full episode. You know what? I am actually going to save that one for um, just a full episode because it is really long. Like, I'm like, this is too long. Uh, instead, I'll go with this one, <laughs> which came from, I'm just going to title them JD. Um, and I thought this was kind of funny. I felt like, mm, is she coming for me? Um but she said, people from one part of the country moving to another part of the country, but mad that the new place ain't like the old place. <laughs> uh, she said, no disrespect, but it's always somebody from New York mad that they can't get a bacon, egg and cheese. <laughs> She said mad that they can't get a bacon, egg, and cheese in Biloxi. WTF? That is so, that is so funny. She said go get a, craw a crawfish omelet or whatever they eat in Biloxi and remember that you are in Biloxi. All right. All right. Yes, I do think that if you move from one place to another place um, and you mad that that other place that the new place ain't like the old place, that's pretty unreasonable. You know, you might need to ask yourself, like, am I being reasonable? You know? Um, also, too, I think this quote is from Theodore Roosevelt, I believe. Um, Comparison is a thief of joy. And so if you always find yourself, you know, comparing things, then you're never really going to be able to appreciate whatever you know, you're comparing. Like if you're in a new place, if you keep looking back at the old place, you're never really going to be able to appreciate the new place. It's even like relationships. Could you imagine that? Could you imagine if you're in a relationship with somebody and they like, dang, my last girlfriend was so this, 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 and this. My last girlfriend cooked this, this, and this, and this. My last boyfriend, he showed up in this and this way. It's like, well, then you should go back to them. You know? The same goes for cities, I think, like unless the, unless you were forced, unless you were forced. That's the only time where I feel like, all right, it's reasonable to have some level of frustration or, or grief if you were forced to relocate. And so, yeah, you're going to find yourself somewhere wanting a bacon, egg and cheese because that's what you used to get from the corner store, from the bodega, from the chop shop. That's what you used to get in. But now you in Biloxi and everybody trying to tell you to go eat, so, uh, you know, a, a crawfish sandwich. And you like, but oh, I really wanted a bacon, egg, and cheese. I ain't even want to be in Biloxi. My parents made me move to Biloxi. You know, I get that. I, I think I, I think that I can extend a certain level of grace to that person. But eventually, eventually, you'll have to just let that go and start making your own bacon, egg, and cheese. I mean, that's how that's how things that are regional sometimes get to other places, right? It's like 
again, my friend Sabrina, she's from Philadelphia, right? Um, she moved to LA and in Philadelphia, they eat a lot of water ice. Water ice, that's a thing for them, right? A water ice, a Philly cheesesteak. A water ice, I guess there they just call it a cheesesteak, right? And so other people who are from Philadelphia who for some reason relocated their lives to Los Angeles, they decided, you know what, I'm missing this thing so much and we can't find this thing here. But there's other Philadelphians. And so let's just bring that thing that we love to this new place. And service the people that are just like us that want that. I think that that's reasonable because that's a solution to not only your problem, but everybody else's problem. But if you just like, if you just like complaining and everywhere you go, you like, ugh, I hate Biloxi because I can't get no bacon, egg and cheese. Well, then, yeah, you probably not going to make a lot of friends in Biloxi if that's, if, if, if that's all, if that's all you contributing to the conversation or to the, to, to the energy. If, you, you get what I'm saying? So... You know, when I when I first moved from New York to L.A., that's that's a question that t still to this day I get um, as much as I've lived here 10 plus years. That's still the question that I get. Oh, which one do you like better? And I knew very early that I could not compare the two, that it would be a disservice to both of them because they offer very different things. And it would just be a disservice. And like I moved to L.A., I moved to L.A. And if I'm if I'm ever going to give L.A. a chance, if I'm ever going to, you know, make L.A. successful for me, it's not going to help if I'm here every moment talking about it ain't New York. I need a train. I, can, I can't get on a train. I can't get a sandwich. Ain't I, the, the, do you know if the, I, the, the food here ain't got no flavor? Oh, did you know what I'm saying? It's just like if somebody moves to New York from L.A. and they like, oh, my God, it's snowing. Oh, my God. It's the four seasons. You know what I'm saying? The seasons is changing. Yeah, oh, my God. It's so many people. Oh, my God. Like, you know, it's too crowded. It's like, well, then you got to go back to you, go, go to where you are most happy. Go to where you are most content. Or try your best to find the silver lining. Try your best to find the beauty in this new situation that you're in. Or else you're just going to be miserable and the people around you ain't going to want to be around you. So, I don't know, y'all. Hashtag Ask Z in the comments and let me know, do you think it's unreasonable for a person to be in a new place and complain that it's not as good as the old place or it doesn't offer the things that the old place offers? Let me know what you guys think. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. That's that's it for me. That's it for me today, you guys. Um, thank you for tuning in. Again, Ramadan Mubarak and um, everyone else. I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful week. I'll see you next week. Bye.